So let's go to, so first, a quick AM review, because we talked about AM. Um, so remember that we had, uh, that the signal was given by one plus in amplitude uh, of modulation times some sinusoid at the modulation frequency. And then you add that, since that's a zero mean oscillation, um, you need to uh, have a, a DC offset of some kind. And actually, I would like the, uh, I would like to put a parenthesis differently. But then anyway, you get a, a, a ray sinusoid that then modulates the carrier. And I'm not, I'm not gonna use any faces here. Um, and, and the general result was that we had a, a carrier frequency, omega sub c, and then we would get sidebands. So this would be at omega c plus omega sub n, and then omega c minus omega sub n. <clears throat> and so mathematically, we have a product of sinusoids for a large modulation index. So if a sub n is large, then we're looking at some number times the product of these. So it's just a product. And so that is when you use this identity to show that it's also equal to the sum of the signs. Um, and that's what this plot shows. When we found the spectrum, you have to resolve it into fixed tones. And so what we're saying is that if the critical band of hearing is larger than the separation, then you hear it as beating, right? Uh, so that would mean beating. And if you have critical bands that resolve the sinusoidal components, then you hear discrete tones. You hear a tone cluster. You hear what sounds like a telephone uh, push button, for example. All right, so that, that's just to remind you about that, because that's kind of a, a really fundamental point. And I also want to show you the sort of the computer music diagram. Uh, in terms of unit generators, so you have a carrier. So this is a uh, unit generator. And you probably encountered this in other classes. You probably have encountered it in uh, 220 or 256. I mean, it's pretty uh, fundamental in everything. And these unit generators are, are typically sinusoidal oscillators when they're drawn like this. And I'm drawing the waveform as a sinusoid, so that really pins it down. And so there's an amplitude input and a frequency input. And there's usually not a phase input. And that's because we don't normally hear any difference. In the uh, sign examples, you can change the phase and, and you won't hear any difference at all. Now when you combine sine waves, it's possible to hear the effects of phase. Uh, but it's typically very subtle. Because phasing, phase is just the timing. See, when exactly did it go through zero, nobody normally cares. Because we hear uh, steady state timbre in a phase death way. And that goes back to Helmholtz. Helmholtz was the first to uh, notice and publish that, as far as we know. All right, so. In this case, we'll have a carrier amplitude and a carrier frequency, so I'll put a, a C subscript there. And then what we're going to do now is modulate it, so we need an adder. Well, let's go ahead and write the uh, modulating oscillator here. <coughs> so it's got an amplitude modulation and a frequency modulation. And here's its waveform. And so then the uh, amplitude index will, the AM index will come here and then we have our uh, frequency of modulation that we can set anything we want. And so the basic operation here is we add it to a constant, which in, in this example is just normalized to one. And then we go over and do a four quadrant multiply, as it's called. You know, it's just a multiply in normal languages. And so that's, that's what AM looks like. So in this notation, I can now introduce uh, FM frequency modulation.
So frequency modulation is FM, AM, FM are the two most basic modulations. <clears throat> and this is all sinusoids. Everything we're doing involves sinusoids. And we are now mathematical masters of sinusoids. So we can write down the math of everything uh, having to do with this stuff. So now... Sorry, can, can I just ask what the, the star and the plus are? What, what is? Oh, the, there's like the plus sign and then there's the star. Oh, okay, so yes. Yeah, so, um, so plus just means add. So, so okay. one is a constant signal. Okay. I should say that. I mean, maybe I needed to... What, one way I could generate that is using a, an oscillator with frequency zero. So sinusoidal oscillator, but I do have to make sure I'm not at phase zero. I have to make sure I'm, you know, at a phase that will uh, give me a non-zero output. So if you have a zero phase, um, zero frequency cosine oscillator, then that'll work. And so you can put one in as its amplitude. So it, it's really a sequence of ones, constant signal, unit amplitude. And so this multiple, this addition is sample by sample. Okay. So this function here is one plus a sub m uh, sine omega sub n. And this is always sampled, so I'm gonna write it in sampled form. Because these unit generators are always used in digital systems, computer music systems, software systems. Um, you don't see this notation for analog synthesizers. It basically came along with the invention of computer music. Max Matthews was using unit generator notation in the 1950s when he was writing the first acoustic compiler uh, called Music 1, Music 2, up to Music 5. And Music 5 was in Fortran and propagated all over the place, uh, including here. And so we were running Music 5. And then we had our own uh, derivations of it, descendants of Music 5. Uh, Muse 10 was one of them, ran on the KL10, and uh, sort of extended the language more to an Algol type of language. And, and then C sound is a very direct descendant of Music 5. Uh, C sound looks very much like the original uh, Music 5, Music N languages. And uh, Super Collider is a descendant, Chuck is a descendant. Um, there, there are many, many uh, languages that, that owe a lot of their architectural uh, features. Uh, for example, they all use unit generators as their uh, building blocks. Although in, in SuperCollider they call them synth depths. No, inside of a synth depth you have unit generators. So yeah, it's very commonly uh, retained. <coughs> so now, uh, and so then this, this is finally our AM signal. Let me just label it up here. Let me just call it uh, X of T. And then I can write x of nt here to make it a sample version. So this is how you might you know, throw something together in PD. It would look like this in PD. And that's why you know, the original version of PD was called Max, because it's you know, putting unit generators together uh, like Max Matthews would. So a unit generator is like an oscillator. You know, it's, a, it's a sound generating unit that has parameters. So the output is a waveform, but the input is some parameter. So these are, these are fixed parameters. So it's just a convenient notation for designing instruments in computer music. So now I can show you what uh, FM looks like. <clears throat> so in FM, you have a carrier oscillator just like you do in AM. So this will be the amplitude of the carrier and the frequency of the carrier. And so in FM, the, the amplitude is uh, a, a, just a normal parameter that, that's normally attached to an amplitude envelope. So I'll, I'll draw this as an ADSR. Um, have you heard of ADSR envelopes? That stand, now that does go back to analog synthesizers. Um, attack, decay, sustain, release. So a very typical attack envelope is you have some very strong amplitude uh, swell for the attack, and then you have a decay portion, which is getting you through the attack. And normally if you stretch the note out, you don't stretch the attack. You keep the attack fixed in, in its shape. 
but the uh, sustain portion does stretch. So if you are playing this on a keyboard, the, uh, the attack comes out unchanged every time you press a key. But the longer you hold that key, the longer the sustain portion is. And then finally when you lift the key, you go into the release phase, and that's the R. And those are very typically exponential releases. And then typically during the sustain, you'll have vibrato, you'll have things going on, choralization, and so on. But the attack is a very important part of any wave form. For recognizing timbre, for recognizing what it is that you're hearing, the attack is critical. Your brain really analyzes the attack and classifies it on the basis of the attack. So you really want that to be right. And then once the brain has made that classification, you can get away with a lot of uh, substitution and, and trickery. You can swap out, you know, a, a, an oboe for a clarinet, um, you know, later on in the waveform, and, and, and people might not notice, you know, if you fade over to it. So um, it's it's really the attack where a lot of the recognition occurs. All right. So now for frequency modulation, we want to add the modulating oscillator to the carrier frequency. So we'll have some nominal, nominal carrier frequency, F sub C, let's say, and then it's going to be summed with an oscillator output. And so this is going to be have an amplitude, uh, which is our modulating amplitude, and a frequency, which is the modulation frequency. And so that is then your basic FM patch. This is what's called two operator FM. Um, in, in, Yamaha calls unit generators operators, at least in the uh, DX7 days. So the operator is, is one oscillator. So you'll hear that terminology. Um, but here it's two oscillator unit generators plus an adder. You could say this adder needs to be a unit generator because it combines two signals, or at least in this case a parameter and a signal. <clears throat> so then, so what does this sound like? Uh, well, I showed you the demo. So you know what it sounds like. Um, let's write down the math of it. 